we have made some awesome progress on the Quasar Firebase app extension. Check this out. So I'm going to say Quasar create and let's call this project Quasar Firebase play. And I'm just going to leave everything as default, except I'll go to standard instead of pretty. I prefer to just use standard ESLint and we'll use yarn. Now, when that's installed, the only thing I should have to do now is whack in my credentials and we should have something that mostly works. There's one more thing I need to fix up with the routing, but um, soon that'll also be fixed up. Now, one thing that we've changed now um, is that ra with this app extension, rather than you pulling in components, they're all automatically added for you in your project. I'll show you what I mean by that. And this basically just makes it so much easier for you to then go in there, edit the code. So basically, um, the default setup you get is more of a scaffolding, so you can go in there and change things however you like. All right, so now I'm gonna come in here and say yarn dev. Oh, actually we wanna say quasar dev there to start up our dev server. Oh, and <laughs> let me cancel that. We actually have to add the app extension first. So quasar extension add firebase and by the way this is still in alpha so thing there would definitely be some breaking changes and as this installs check out some of the new files that we get on the left panel here and the first thing we're going to get is a config so i'm just going to come over here this is my firebase configuration so i'm going to copy that because when this is done installing i'll just zoom in a little bit we're going to get that config file and there we go we now have a config folder with firebase config and I'm going to whack in those credentials that I just copied paste them in there and the other thing I currently have to do is jump into source router routes.js and when you finish when you register instead of taking you to slash nothing it actually takes you to slash dashboard but I plan on making that a little bit more customizable so you won't have to do this in the future but for now that's what we have to do and I'm pretty sure that's it. Everything is now going to work. So if we run Quasar Dev now, the Firebase app extension kicks in. This is really exciting. I can't wait till this becomes stable or, um, or even alpha. We'll give that a second to run. Now, I believe this is a linting problem. Yeah, so the current version of Quasar doesn't use the current, um, the latest linter that has a whole bunch of the new sort of single file component features. So by the time people watch this, it might actually be released. But for now, I have to go to ESLint plugin view, change that to eight. Save it and jump out of that. And we're gonna have to run yarn again there. And if I go to ESLint view.js.org and we look up define, what is it? Define props. Yeah, so basically they give you this macro in your linter um, that allows you to use stuff like define props, define emits, um, so you don't get no undefined warnings. So that's really easy to do. Once you've installed the latest version of ESLint, you just come into your ESLint RC. Um, I'm gonna get rid of essentials and actually go to recommended. I like a stronger linter. Sorry, I don't want this to become a linting tutorial. <laughs> uh, and save that. We might have to restart the ESLint server, so I'm going to do that, and I'll restart the Vola server as well. Or you can just close code and open it up again. Uh, cool. So now if we run Quasar Dev. Let's give that a second to run. And while that's running, uh, check this out. Notice in pages we've got now this Firebase um, directory that was automatically added for us when we added the app extension. Same with components. We've got some Firebase components for free and also some actions. You can come in here and change some details around how register, sign in or sign out works. So that's pretty cool. Very easy to come in here and just configure things however you like them. Now, yeah, I thought this might happen. So the error page um, doesn't pass linting anymore. I'm gonna have to change that to error page. This isn't Quasar Firebase stuff, um, this is more just new linting rules that have been added to Quasar. So now I've updated that to error 404 page because it has to be multi-word now. And if I go to routes.js, I now need to change that to error 404 
page. All right, I think that might be it. Uh, so we'll close this down, start it up again. Whew, this is becoming a linting tutorial. This is good stuff to know anyway. So anyway, this has become a bit of a vlog. So it's all right, it's nice to run into these problems. And there we go. So here we, here we go, it doesn't look like much to begin with, but if I go to register here, Notice that we now have a register page for free. And if I go to login, we have a login page. Now this is all completely customizable. So if I go to components, Firebase, here is our sign in form and our sign in card. So maybe you want to add at the top here something like, um, uh, I don't know, my company name, save it. And there we go, you get the idea. You can basically come in here and just change it to whatever you like. This is very much scaffolding and you come in there and just configure things to a way that feels nice to you. Uh, but yeah, you just get this very basic sign in and here's an account I set up earlier. This is my email from a long, long time ago. It's basically become my spam email account now. <laughs> and there we go, everything just works. As long as you have your credentials in there, it all just works. And next thing you'll probably want to do is have a logout button up here. So I've included a component for that. So if we come into our layout here. And I'm going to get rid of the version here and just change that to our logout button. And hopefully I can just say here Firebase. And you can see all these Firebase components that's um, got auto completion working really well for us. And we can just find the sign out button. And there it is there. And I believe that works. So let's save it. There's our sign out button. And this is just a plain old Quasar button that gives you the sign out logic. So that means I can come in here and do stuff like this. Flat, round, and let's give it an icon equal to logout. Save it, and there we go. We've got our logout button. Click on that, and it just works. So all the logout logic is done for you. You basically just use this button and it'll just work for you. Now notice that I did actually import this. So if I double click on that and come down here, uh, I'm pretty sure that was imported. Yeah, up here it is here. So there is actually an import there for that. I uh, just wanted to make sure that you caught that. Uh, we don't actually need source there. It can come straight from components. And there we go. So let's just play around with this again. And I want to show you a couple of other cool details here. So if I log in now, go in there. Notice that uh, if I go to the login page again, it takes me straight back to this page here. Let's do that again. And I'm going to even copy that, just close this, and let's go straight to that login page. And notice that it flashed for a second and took us straight here. Basically what it does is it assumes that if you go to the login page, um, you want to log in, right? You're not already logged in, but it will do a check on the background. Now, the reason that you don't get a spinner and it shows you the login page straight away is because you want your login and register pages to load as quickly as possible. That's really important. You don't want spinners and stuff like that on your login page. So basically it assumes if you're going there, you're not already logged in, but it does check in the background anyway. Okay, so notice that we got that little flash there for a second. However, it actually does something slightly different on the dashboard page. So if I refresh this page here, or oh, if I just copy that, and let's just open a new tab and go straight to the dashboard page. Now we should be getting a spinner there. Maybe it's just loading too quickly. Or I might have to be logged out first. Yeah, because it's using optimistic methods here. So if I go straight to that dashboard page now, um, are we logged out? Okay, so it looks like this, um, I have found a bug. Yeah, so that should automatically be redirecting me to the login page, but it doesn't look like it is. And I don't know if that's because the logout button isn't working or something else. Anyway, that's not important. That's something I'll work on. So usually what, what is supposed to happen there, what will happen is that if you go to the dashboard page, um, you'll get a spinner that basically checks if you're logged in. And if you're not, it sends you straight to the login page. So it handles all of that really annoying logic for you, or at least it does for the other routes and it's something is uh, up with the dashboard page for now. That's all right, it's still in development. So yeah, the main big change here that I want you to know about is that everything is now accessible to you. 
You can go to your actions and change how they work. You can go to your components and you can go to the pages as well. So I've even got Firebase pages um, where you can tap in and basically change some of the um, bigger picture stuff if you would like to. And one of the cool things about this is it also means eventually we could give you different options. So for example, if you wanna have a login page, let's just go back to that login page, where it's like split in half and on the left side you've got some information on the right side you've got the sign in um or the register stuff there which you know you often see with a sign in page or if you want your sign in page to also be the landing page you know you can start playing around with it and doing cool stuff like that uh, that's kind of what I'm going for here. I want it to be very scaffoldy, where we basically just give you everything and then you can figure it however you desire. It's much easier than offering the components um, in a way that's hidden from you. And it means that power users can then come in there and change things how they like. But if you're a beginner, then you can just use the default sign in and um, you know all that, all that jazz. So yeah, I think that's about it. Oh, there's one last thing that I wanna share with you. So I've got a larger vision here. Basically what I wanna do is rather than having Firebase actions, I eventually wanna turn this into auth actions. And what I mean by that is I want these components that we're using here, I want them to be um, uh, authentication provider agnostic. And what do I mean by that? I mean, I wanna be able to swap out the Firebase logic, for example, with Laravel Sanctum logic. So instead of, um, so basically everything that is exposed here could be, uh, would, if it follows the exact same API, we could basically re-implement it with Laravel Sanctum. So in other words, you don't have to change any of these components and you can swap out uh, your authentication logic. And then we could basically create an implementation for Laravel Sanctum. We could create one for Superbase. We could create one for Nest.js. We could create one for any um, backend and you would then be able to basically install it and all of the components though would remain the exact same here. Because if, if I go into this um, Firebase register card, notice that all of this logic here this is stuff that you would always see anyway for, uh, not login, sorry, this is register. This is all stuff that you would see anyway for a register card. You're always gonna have a loading spinner. You're always going to have errors and whether or not it has errors. Um, and you're always gonna have a handler where when you click on it, it registers. So basically you can probably imagine that all we have to do is re-implement this logic with a different um, service provider, authentication provider, I should say, and the rest of the component itself will just work. So that's one of the reasons that I've split it into actions, not just to make it sort of pulled apart, but also so that at some point we could go one step further and rather than calling this Firebase, you would have, for example, a auth provider directory um, and then you just uh, have all of your auth provider logic which would then use Firebase logic as another abstraction. But if any of that doesn't make sense to you, um, you don't have to worry about that for now. That What I'm basically trying to say is I'm trying to make it easy so that down the line, um, we can then use other um, authentication providers rather than just Firebase with very little effort. So there you go. Hope you enjoyed this one. That's the latest updates with the Quasar Firebase app extension.